Well, hello YouTubers! Welcome back to my channel. Mike here. Okay, today's the day. This is the day we're actually going to try some smelting for real. Okay. Um, it's hot as heck out here. It's early in the morning. It's already hot as heck. It's as humid as all get out because it rained last night. But, you, you know, it, it seems like a terrible day to start up the foundry furnace and do some smelting. But the weather's supposed to be crap for the rest of the week, so... I'm going to try and get some smelting in today. I've got one of my uh, gold ore samples here, B-Star. Um, and I talked about these samples in the last two videos that I did, uh, where I crushed up the ore samples and panned them out. And then in the last video where I was um, practicing smelting. So uh, we're going to try and practice some smelting today. First thing i got to do is i got to roast this stuff and convert any sulfides left in here into oxides. So we will do that first and then I've got all the equipment out that I need to measure out the flux components that we're going to use for the smelting. So let me get this stuff roasting and then uh, we'll smelt it. Okay I got my um Long suffering gray beat up uh, cast iron frying pan over here on top of my foundry furnace. Got a couple of fire bricks on there. So let me get the fire started and we will do some roasting here. Doesn't need to be quite that hot just for roasting. Okay, we'll let that heat up a bit. Okay, fry pan's good and hot. We'll just give these a good roast. Make sure that all of the uh, sulfides in there get converted into oxide. Okay, so I'll let that cook for a little while. So yeah, I call this sample B star because I have a sample B. And this is about one third of it. I didn't want to commit all of it, my first attempt at smelting. So this is only about a third of it. And this is material I found when I was out rock hounding in the mountains, I found a gold vein popping out of the side of a hill. Uh, the old timers back in the 1800s probably had obviously done a little mining there. It may have been more exploratory than anything, but I found a lot of rust stained quartz with sulfides in them. I brought back a pile of it, crushed it up, panned it out. So what we got in here are sulfides from that material. Um, some native copper I found in it. Little bits of copper all scattered through it. Uh, so it looked like little bits of gold and uh, a little bit of leftover blonde quartz dust that I didn't get entirely panned out. So this is what we're going to smelt at first. And it looks like we're adding a little bit of rust from the pan to it. Okay. I think our uh, roast is just about done. I'll let this go a little while longer. And then uh, we'll make up some flux and we'll see if we can smelt this. Okay, while well, we're waiting for the roast to finish, uh, I'm going to measure out the components I need for my flux here. Now, everything I see says I need to measure out flux by volume, not weight. But I've done all my experiments with weight, so we're going to continue. In that previous video I was measuring everything out by weight and well towards the end I was getting it working pretty good. So I'm going to go with 50 grams of Chapman Flux which is what I've used in the past. You probably can't see the, uh, the scale screen there but 50 grams. Pretty much right on the money. Alright. So 50 grams of Chapman Flux. Put that right in there. Fire clay crucible. And there's going to be links to all this stuff I'm using down in the uh, video description. 
I'm going to put in 20 grams of soda ash. It's going to help thin out the flux some because I was having a problem with the flux being too thick when it was molten. little over but that's okay. Put that in there. Zero this out. I need 10 grams of lead. There's 6.4. Nine and a half. Just a hair over 10. 10.4. Not going to quiggle about 10, about 0.4 grams. So we'll go with uh, that. Okay. So, once I get the uh, ore roasted, finished roasting, I'm going to add it to this too, and then we'll be ready to smelt. Okay, our uh, roast is done. Going to add our roasted material here. Into the crucible. And I'm going to mix this all up pretty thoroughly, just pour it back and forth a few times. And I do believe we are ready to try some smelting. Okay, meet you back at the furnace. Now I'm roasting sample A. Sample A is my most promising sample, okay? pump it up a little bit. Sample A came from a historically very rich gold mine. I found it on the waste rock pile. Very well mineralized chunk of quartz, lots of sulfides in it. I actually found a fair amount of free gold in this stuff. Flower gold, but it's there. Pretty much every pan of it had some. So this is the concentrate for breaking up sample A and panning it out. So we're going to roast this too and smelt it and see what we get. This is the one I'm most interested in because I know there's gold here. I could see it and it came from a mine that was known for producing a lot of gold. So we'll see what we get with this stuff. I'm sure it's not showing up on camera but the color of this stuff is darkening up as it roasts. So I'm sure it's those uh, golden sulfides turning into uh, darker oxides. So that's good. It's working. All right, while the frying pan's getting hot, I'm going to go ahead and roast up the rest of sample B. Yeah, this is the stuff I found when I was out hiking. This has a whole lot of sulfides in it. They've been oxidizing away on their own in a week or so since I panned them out, darkened it up a lot, but just I, it's amazing how quickly it's darkening. It's turning very dark brown after I poured it in there. So there were still some sulfides in there that needed to be oxidized. So good, we're getting that done. So I'll let that go for a little while. Meanwhile, sample A kind of clumped up on me during the roasting process. Look how dark that is now. It was full of blonde quartz debris before, but look how dark it is now after roasting. So, crushed it up into a powder again in my mortar and pestle just to make sure don't have any trouble with clumps not dissolving in the flux. Yeah, look how red that is. I hope that's showing up on the camera. Very red. So we've created a lot of oxides in there where there were sulfides before. Okay. Sample B should be just about done over there on the uh, frying pan. I'll get it off and I'll probably run it through the, uh, the mortar and pestle too just to make sure there's no clumps in it and then we'll get on to smelting these two. I'm really interested to know what's in sample A because I can see gold in there and it came from a really rich mine. So, let's see. Okay, time to do some actual smelt. So I've got sample B star here which is going to be my test sample. I've got less of it, so if something goes wrong, 
hopefully I'll learn something from it and I won't lose too much gold, okay? So, we'll go with uh, B-Star first. That's going to take a little while to get up to temperature. I got to watch it close to make sure it does not boil over. That's one lesson, important lesson I've learned with my smelting practice in my last video. So, boil overs happen, they're back to life. But you got to be really careful, you got to be ready to uncover the, the furnace or turn the heat down really quick or both when it gets up towards the top of the crucible so it doesn't boil over and you lose everything into the bottom of the furnace. That's very annoying. Okay, so it's just going to take a while to heat up. Yeah, I don't know how well that's showing up in there. This is the point where I need to be real careful about not letting it boil over because it's bubbling pretty hard. Doubt gassing. So, uh, yeah. I pulled the, uh, I had the hole, the, heat, the exhaust hole there, about half closed off to keep the heat in. But once it started bubbling this hard, I opened it up. And I'll keep an eye on it. I might have to turn the heat down for a while, too, if it gets too close to the top of the rim of the crucible. So just got to be Johnny on the spot and keep an eye on it. Ooh, let me get out of the heat, get the camera out of the heat. And uh, just got to keep an eye on it until it's done outgassing and the boiling settles down. Then I can really put the spurs to it, heat it up good before I pour it in the cone bowl. Okay, so we just got a ways to go. Alright, it's been a little while longer. The boiling has subsided. It's just hardly bubbling at all. I've got the vent hole partly closed again over there, keeping the heat in. I got the heat. I had to turn the heat down a little bit to keep it from boiling over. I've got the heat turned back up. We're gonna wait until the bubbling stops entirely and the liquid just lays down smat, flat and glassy. And then uh, then we'll be ready to pour it. Okay, bubbling has essentially stopped. The liquid is laid down, it's pretty glassy. I've got my stir stick here. Just a piece of steel. I've been preheating in front of the burner, so it's red hot. So I can stir this stuff without worrying about everything in there freezing out on it. Yes, it's very, very low viscosity. So I'm hoping. Ooh, my branding iron there, red hot. Um, I'm hoping that when I pour, because of viscosity so low, I'm hoping that when I pour it, all the lead winds up at the bottom of the pyramidal cone mold. And it'll contain all the metal that was in that sample, all the gold, all the copper, any silver. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, we're getting really close to being ready to pour. I am going to preheat the cone mold. Very important. Not just to drive out any moisture. I'm going to get that thing really, really hot so that hopefully um, when I pour, the, pour the, the liquid in, the slag will stay cool, um, liquid a little while longer and allow everything to consolidate. So I'm going to get that just short of red hot. It's going to take a few minutes, then we'll be ready to pour. To get this warm too. Don't want any moisture on the tongs. Moist tongs might crack the, the crucible when I grab it. So we don't want that. Okay, I do believe we are ready to go. The cold mode's looking pretty darn hot. The liquid's ready. So let me uh, get my face shield on. We'll get out there. We'll do this. Oh, that looks good. Except I dumped the crucible over, but that's okay. 
That looks good. All right. Future pour, I'll try to arrange the camera so you can see the slag as it goes in and starts solidifying. It's very cool. I'm going to put this crucible back in here so it cools down slowly and doesn't crack. Let me uh, get something to cover that up so when the slag starts snapping and breaking in there, it doesn't go flying everywhere. Use the old frying pan. That should work good. I want to keep the slag in there. When, it, when the slag cools and starts um, disintegrating from the internal stresses, it tends to go flying everywhere like little bullets, which is kind of dangerous. But I also want to keep all the slag in there so I can take a look at it and see if I've got all my lead. Or if it's distributed throughout the slag. So we'll see. Once that cools down some, I'll move it. I don't want to move it right now. I'll move it and I'll put it in front of my big fan so it can cool down to ambient. Then we can dump it out and see what we got. Damn, it's hot out here. Wow. It's the wrong day to be doing this. About 100 degrees out here without the foundry running. I'm a sweaty mess. Okay, this has been sitting here for a while. I've heard a little bit of snapping and popping. Let's have a look inside. Oh yeah, the slag's all going to pieces. All right. So I'm going to take this now. It's been a while. It's still pretty hot though. I'm going to put it in front of my big fan so it can cool down to room temp. And I don't want to dump it out before then because the, li the lead in the bottom could still be liquid because it's got a pretty low melting point. The lead's got to be solid before I dump it out. So I'm going to go put it in front of the fan. We'll wait a little while longer and see what we got. Okay, this thing's been sitting in front of my big fan cooling for quite a while. Oh yeah, cool as a touch on the bottom, so dump it out. There's the top of the pyramid right there. Gotta be careful, I got bloody in my practices. This glass is really sharp. This slag is a type of glass. Okay. Here's our lid button. I don't see any lead so far in any of the uh, slag. Well, I take it back. There's a little piece right there. One little tiny bit. There might be some more little pieces hidden in here, but... Okay, let's weigh this up and see what we got to get a more slag off of it. And we'll see how much of our lead got we got back. One little bit right there. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. If you see that little piece of uh, lead? Yeah, that's showing up on the viewfinder. That's pretty tiny. That's probably less than my scale could even measure. We'll see how much the, uh, the prill here weighs. So we lost about a gram of lead. Well, I know that's not a gram of lead right there. And I didn't see any other bits in the slag. I think I've got an issue because I'm using an oxidizing flux. I think some of the lead is getting oxidized away to uh, lead oxide or litharge and being incorporated into the flux. That's what I think is happening. Um, any you old hands that's smelting out there, let me know if that's a possibility or not. So, any of the precious metals that were in uh, sample B star should be in that uh, lead prill now. I have to compel it away and uh, see what's left behind. But I think before I set up for compelling, I'm going to um, do the other two samples. I think I'm going to smelt the other two samples, sample A and sample B. But I think I'm going to have to wait till another day to do it because the sky is starting to look really threatening. 
Um, I don't want to get part way into a smelt and have the heavens open up and drench my furnace. So um, I think we're going to have to wait. The weather forecast is not great for the next few days or week, but hopefully we can get out here one morning before it gets too stinking hot because I've been working over that furnace for a better part of a couple hours now between the roasting and the first smelting. I'm a sweaty mess. So hopefully we can get out here before it gets too hot one morning and uh, get those other two samples roasted and then we'll get to capelling and see what we got. So, all right. Be back when the weather's a little nicer. All right, got the furnace buttoned up. Yeah, the thunder's getting really bad. Okay, we'll, we'll pick this up again, hopefully tomorrow or the next day. And uh, through the magic of YouTube, I'll just tack it onto this video. Okay, see you then. Okay, folks, it has been three days of relentless rain. There were two inches of water out here around my furnace yesterday. It's gone down a bit. It's been a relentless, miserable drizzle all day today. Here it is getting late in the afternoon. The rain has finally stopped. But I looked at the radar. We got maybe an hour's reprieve, and there's another line of thunderstorms coming behind this, uh, this clear area. So I'm not going to have time to do the rest of the smelting of my other two samples, but I might, might just have enough time to coupel the one sample I have smelted. Okay, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Let me get the furnace uncovered and get it set up for coupelling, and we will coupel the one sample we have. Okay, there's our lead prill from sample B star that I managed to smelt before it started raining. Um, I've got it in a brand new bone ash cupel in there. Um, I have found that when I'm cupelling, it's better to have the, the burner on top blowing down towards it with a highly oxidizing flame. Uh, if I do it like this, it takes forever, uses a lot of propane. I just don't think there's enough oxygen in there to burn up the lead, the lead oxide. But if I have the top of the furnace open and I position the burner up here blowing down at the cupel and open the, the oxygen ports on the burner over there, as much as I can without the flame going out. That works really well for propelling. So let me get that set up and we'll get started before the rain comes back in. Okay, the whole idea behind propelling and how it works is um, lead, if you heat it up high enough in an oxidizing environment, it will oxidize away to lead oxide or litharge. And lead oxide um, will become a liquid at a high enough temperature. The bone ash cu um, cupel down there, it can actually absorb that lead oxide liquid. Once the cupel gets hot, hot enough, it will absorb that lead oxide liquid into its pores as it runs off the lead. And that will expose fresh lead, which will then oxidize to lead oxide, liquefy and run off and be absorbed into the cupel, exposing more lead. And pretty soon, all of the lead will be oxidized away and there'll be nothing left but the precious metals in there. Now there was some copper in um, sample B. As I understand cupelling, and I'm new at this, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, as I understand this, the copper will oxidize away too, the copper oxide, and that'll be absorbed. So we should, in the end, only be left with uh, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum group metals, in whatever bead is left there. So that's why we're doing cupelling, okay? We're going to get rid of everything except the gold and silver and other precious metals. Uh, I've got a ring stand here. I picked this up at one of my big scrap runs. Uh, i got a bunch of laboratory equipment. So this works good for holding up the, uh, the burner at just the right angle. So let me get the burner lit and we'll get this party started. fire up a little bit here. That's going to take a little while. The lead will melt fairly quickly from the heat, but it's going to take a while for the cool to get up hot enough that the uh, lead oxide liquid can migrate into its pores. Okay, I'm going to let everything heat up a little bit, and then I'm going to adjust the burner here so that it's a more of an oxidizing flame. I'll open the uh, vent holes on the side as much as possible without putting the flame out. And uh, we'll keep this flame in here as oxidizing as possible to burn 
burn away the, the lead. But I gotta let everything warm up a little bit first. The furnace is damp too, so this may take a little while. I can see that the lead's starting to melt though. And um, I'm gonna move back. I'm not gonna hover over it because number one, it's hot. And number two, there's gonna be lead vapors coming out of it. And I don't really wanna have to put on my full face uh, respirator for this, so I'm just gonna sort of stay up with it. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, that is hot. So the flame is a lot more oxidizing now. So that should oxidize the lead a lot quicker. I can't do that when it's cold because it tends to put the fire out. But since everything's glowing red hot in there, the really lean gas will still burn. But uh, it should oxidize the lead a little better. Okay, so I'm going to get back out of here before I inhale too many lead fumes. So it's only been a couple of minutes, and look how much smaller that puddle of lead in the cupel's got. That oxidizing flame is working just like gangbusters there taking down that lead. So a few more minutes will probably be done. Once the lead's gone, all that will be left is a button of uh, precious metals. Probably pretty small, but hopefully we'll get something. We'll see, it's just shrinking before our very eyes. This is going to be done real quick. see what we've got I almost certainly is too small for me to weigh but hopefully there's a little something there besides what I was expecting to get from the lead we'll see once it cools down some all right this cupel is still wicked hot but at least it's not glowing anymore so I can get a close-up look at our little bead of metal there now this is definitely bigger than the bead I got when I coupled some some lead alone back in the last video when I was practicing because I know most lead is contaminated with some silver so I did a 15 gram sample of lead alone and got a much smaller bead than this uh, out of it so considering there was a lot less lead here than in my test we've definitely got some precious metal there in that little bead but not very much but the sample was so small that I ran I really need to do larger samples and I need to be more scientific about it I need to weigh you know the, the rock before I crush it and uh, smelt it and cupel it so I can get like um, a measurement in grams per ton of precious metals but of course I just did everything I had in the future, I'll be more scientific about it. And the rains are just about to start up again, so this is it for today. I've got the furnace covered up so it doesn't get soaked too badly. Maybe in another day or two or three, I can I can uh, smelt the rest of the samples and cupel them and see what we get. There's definitely some precious metal there, 
I'll have to find a way to weigh that. I don't think my scale, which goes to a hundredth of a gram, will be able to weigh that. Um, but uh, that's definitely a bigger bead than I got with my test with my test of lead alone. Anyway, we'll call this part uh, part one, and part two will be when the weather clears up and um, we can uh, smelt the uh, the other two samples and the Kubel them down and see what we get. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, educational, inspiring, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Can't get my hand too close to that crucible it's, or that cupola. It's still hot. Give the video a like. Um, press the little bell icon. YouTube wants you to press to be notified when new videos come out because as a subscriber, if you press that bell icon, you will be notified when I release new videos. Check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64. I've just released some new stuff over there, good stuff. So check that out. Like, subscribe there, press the bell icon. Leave a comment. Feel free to comment. Uh, let me know what you think of my process here. If uh, you're an old hand at smelting and compelling, feel free to give me any constructive criticism, helpful advice, whatever suggestions always open to that and i will see you in part two when this crummy weather clears up a little bit and i can run the furnace for a few hours without having to worry about getting dumped on by rain all right see you then thanks for watching bye